four of the BFG. Uh, the cave. The giant ran on and on, but now a curious change took place in his way of running. He steamed suddenly to go into a higher gear. Faster and faster he went, and soon he was travelling at such speed that the landscape became blurred. The wind stung on Sophie's cheeks. It made her eyes water. It whipped her head back and whistled in her ears. She could no longer feel the giant's feet touching the ground. She had a weird sensation that they were flying. It was impossible to tell whether they were over land or sea. The giant had some sort of magic in his, in his legs. The wind rushing against Sophie's face became so strong that she had to duck down again into the blanket to prevent her head from being blown away. It was really possible that they were crossing oceans. It certainly felt that way to Sophie. She crouched in the blanket and listened to the howling of the wind. It went on for what seemed like hours. Then, all at once, the wind stopped its howling. The pace began to slow down. Sophie could feel the giant's peak feet pounding again and again over, over the earth. She poked her head up out of the blanket to have a look. They were in the country of thick forests and rushing rivers. The giant had suddenly slowed down and he was now running more normally, although normal was silly to word to use to describe a gall galloping giant. He leaped over a dozen rivers. He went rattling, rattling through the great forest and then into the valley and up over a range of hills as bare as concrete. As soon as he was galloping over a zealot, desolate wasteland, and he was not white of this earth, but the ground was flat and pale yellow. Lumps, great lumps of blue rocks were scattered around, and dead trees stood up everywhere like skeletons. The moon had long since disappeared, and now the dawn was great breaking. Sophie, still peering out from beneath the blanket, saw suddenly ahead of her a great craggy mountain. The mountain was dark blue, and all around it was the, the sky was gushing and glistening in the light, with light. Big bits of pale gold were flying around the delicate, frosty, white flakes of cloud, and over to one side, a rim of the morning sun was coming up red as black blood. Right beneath the mountains, the giant stopped. He was pushing, puffing mightily. His great chest was heaving in and out. He paused to catch his breath. Directly in front of them, lying against the same side of the mountain, Sophie could see a massive round stone. It was as big as a house. The giant reached out and rolled the stone to one side as easily as if it had been a football. football. And now, where the stone had been, there appeared a vast black hole. The hole was so large, the giant didn't even have to duck his head in as he went in. He strove in, strode in the black hole, still carrying Sophie, in one hand, the trumpet and the suitcase in the other. As soon as it was inside, he stopped and turned and rolled the great stone back into place so that the entrance to his secret cave was completely hidden from outside. Now that the entrance had been sealed, there was not a glint of light inside the cave. All was black. Sophie herself had been lowered down to the ground and then the giant let go blanket completely. His footsteps moved away. Sophie sat there in the dark, shivering with the fear. He is getting ready to eat me, she told herself. He will probably eat me more, just as I am. 
or perhaps he will boil me first. Or he'll have me fried. He will drop me like a rasher rasher, rasher of bacon into some gigantic frying pan sizzling with fat. A blaze of light suddenly lit up the whole place. Sophie blinked and stared. She saw an enormous cavern with a high rocky roof. The walls on either side were lined with shelves and on the shelves there stood a roll of glass jars. There were, there were jars everywhere. They were piled up in the corners. They filled every nook and cranny of the cave. In the middle of the floor, there was a table, 12 feet high, and a chair to match. The giant took off his black cloak and hung it against the wall. Sophie saw that underneath the cloak, he was wearing a sort of collarless shirt and a dirty old leather waistcoat that he didn't seem to have any buttons. His trousers were faded and green and were far too short in the legs. On his bare feet, he was wearing a pair of ridiculous sandals that for some reason had holes cut along each side with a large hole at the end where his toes stuck out. Sophie, crouching on the floor of the cave in the rimmed, in thick rimmed, steel rimmed glasses, she was trum trembling like a leaf in the wind, and a finger of ice was running up and down the length of her spine. Ah! shouted the giant, walking forward and rubbing his hands together. What has we got here? His booming voice rolled around the walls of the cave like a burst of thunder.